with the Skinny NYC. We're here with Jahangir Mehta at Meta 4, where they serve bold flavors and small plates, and best of all, gluten-free treats. How are you, Jahanga? Very well, thank you. How do you do? So, we know that this is your second restaurant, and the first incarnation was graffiti. Absolutely. And um, how long has this restaurant been open? This has been a little over three years, and we are very happy to be on the little corner of Duane and Church in Tribeca. Uh, called Metaphor and uh, Graffiti has been open for a little over eight years right. and uh, we're uh, really having to just keep that spirit going. We're going on with a third little niche that we're going to create uh, next to Graffiti which is going to be a very private dining uh, sort of uh, little cavern that we're going to create. Uh, just for about 12 seats. Your food is really known for its eclectic flair. Can you talk a little bit more? What does that really mean, eclectic? I think it's a little bit of different uh, areas of life in terms of uh, areas in terms of the world, areas in terms of who I like to visit, areas in terms of what my mouth feel wants to uh, have, and, uh, and, and your upbringing, and, and, uh, and also the little bits that you take in from your experiences that you've gone through, uh, from being a pastry chef, which I was for a good amount of years in my life and then moving on to a little bit savory step by step and uh, my origin uh, being a Persian but I've lived in India so all those little attributes is what I make out of my cooking and and that's what graffiti it was and is and will always be is uh, it's my personal interpretation of food and uh, that's what we do have at uh, graffiti and that's the eclectic flair that we create would you say any particular experience or agricultural area influences your food the most? Or? I wouldn't say that it is exactly that. I mean, there are some dishes, like we do the pizza, which is a very pastry way of making a pizza and the way of we use puff pastry with phyllo as our base. Uh -huh, we cool. really don't even use cheese at all in that, uh, in that pizza. Uh, uh, at Graffiti. Over here we do use a goat cheese which is mixed with truffle. It's, it, it has those little little different nuances which you don't see in and that would come out from that pastry background of it. On the other hand, the burger that we make has a lot of uh, Indian spices almost like uh, and med uh, as well as Middle Eastern spices used in there and, and it almost tastes like kebab. So it's like a kebab burger almost. And uh, so there it is about taking in what, how, what I grew up with or influences in terms of that part of it. So it, it, it all depends on where you're pulling your resources yeah. from. One of, the, one of the things about your menu that I really like is the gluten-free options. Can you just talk about gluten-free a little bit more for a lot of people that don't know what gluten-free might mean? Well, I mean, uh, we are very uh, 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 happy to do this and we've been doing this for the last uh, eight years at Graffiti and even more profusely at Metaphor. We even have a full gluten-free menu and people with celiac disease are very, very happy to, uh, that we have this option. We have a full menu which has that option in terms of vegetarian as well as non-vegetarian because here we also have a full vegetarian menu. So in case someone is... Uh, in a group, they just don't feel isolated. They, in fact, we get a lot of that where we like, it's always difficult to take my friends who are non-vegetarians where I want to go because like they have, don't have options and they are, they're always like, oh gosh, we'll have to eat vegetarian. Right. Here it is like, they can do what they want, I can do what I want. And same with the gluten. If you were celiac or you had gluten allergies, uh, you would be very well accommodated. And, uh, and I think having a full gluten-free menu has a tremendous impact for that person. And uh, I'm very lucky that um, the uh, NFCA, the National Foundation of Celiac Awareness, has um, uh, uh, made me a spokesperson for them. And in fact, I'm going on a, a nationwide tour uh, to promote uh, uh, gluten-free products, gluten-free food, gluten-free, how to 
interact with gluten-free clients. So gluten is not just in cookies and cakes, it's in a lot it's of in things. Right? It's in flour, yeah, it's in soy, it's in many things that you may have not, you may have just not envisioned and said, oh, I didn't realize that this wasabi piece which I was munching at the bar had gluten right, in there. Right. You know, sometimes you just, there are some things you personally don't know or it is something that your staff doesn't know. Right. And, it, and, and also a lot of times people don't realize that gluten cannot be killed on fire. It doesn't die. Like oh. it, it's, it, it, you just can't say, okay, let me slap on some, uh, I'm making my burgers right now with, and I'm grilling my bread. And then, oh, there was a gluten order. Oh, yeah, yeah, we do it. And what, the next thing you do is you're slapping on oh, okay. your bread, gluten-free bread, on the same grill. And you're thinking, it's fine, and it's not. You're a very busy man. You not only have two restaurants, but you also wrote a book yeah. called a Mantra, which is the rules of indulgence. indulgence. <laughs> so I found that really interesting. I was wondering, what are the rules? I never thought there would be rules to indulgence, but... There are rules for everything. <laughs> I think the title what it mainly tries to portray is I think everything in moderation, even indulgence should be done in moderation. Uh -huh. And I think that is what we are trying to really promote and, and that is what I promote with my cooking, that is what I promote with uh, all the programs I do with children and I love teaching children's classes, children's uh, in schools and all those little attributes. So basically the book was all about that. We broke the book down uh, in the terms of uh, plant. So we have recipes from the roots, we have recipes from the leaves, the uh, flowers, seeds, and that's how we really structured the whole book down. These classes that you um, teach kids, can you talk a little bit more? I know you want to expand their palate and teach them about more different group, food groups and stuff, which is great because a lot of kids these days, they drink a lot of soda and a lot of sugar and just, just kind of the way things are going now. So it's nice to see someone doing something to change that. I think it's more to do with uh, education. I think uh, just educating the kid uh -huh. and then of course molding is on to the parents, on to the teachers and so forth and our society. It's everything. And uh, unfortunately uh, uh, we have a lot of opposition from society sometimes when someone like the mayor who wants to do things in a, uh, in a way that he thinks is right and it might be perceived as dictatorship but I think uh, sometimes you need people like that to get you back on track. Now do the kids like look at the greens and go blah or do they really yeah. kind of, are they curious about it? See the, again what I feel is it's, I think we've gone into a society where people have seen greens in that very bland way. It is. I think if you uh, if you if you use the greens in a way that would excite them, all right, they may not go into that structure. They, I mean, till today, even large like steakhouses, which are doing very well, are still serving vegetables in the most horrible way of just blanching it and putting it on your plate. You also have children. Like, do you make dishes specifically for them too? Yeah, I, I think uh, which is very good because then they understand. Uh, the attributes of what food is, what, uh, uh, what, uh, how to extend their palate. I mean, I think for me the main thing is I just like them to try different things. That's my main thing. I think you may not like it, which uh, one of the nutritionists has told me that for children, or for anyone for that matter, but you have to almost experiment 30 times on your palate before you would start liking that dish. Or almost, maybe more than liking or even accepting to like it. Uh -huh. So where you will feel it's not odd on my palate. That's funny that it's 30 times because they say to create a habit you need to do something 21 times. So I wonder what the gap is. <laughs> you never know. You right. never know. What's your um, latest gluten for your dishes? To your menu. Uh, which one did we put the late? I think the scallops was our latest, if I'm not mistaken, which we which we made. Of course, uh, it's a dish which goes along with some bread on the side, but okay. but the whole dish itself is completely gluten free. That's, right. and That's really important because a lot of people don't know that gluten hides in everything. Even though scallops, you wouldn't think would be a problem with gluten, but there's gluten, like you said, in the sauce or. You no know, hiding in places, so right. there you have it. Gluten-free scallops with bread on the side, metaphor. Um, 
Thank you very much. Thank you for spending very, time very with us. Much. It was very educational. I, I'm excited to tell my friend about the children's cooking classes. I'm very happy. His daughter eats only macaroni and cheese, and um, we will change you a little pasta. bit. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really, really nice to meet you. Actually. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Same yeah. here. Yeah. Take Thank care. You. Take Bye. You. Bye. So here's my favorite part: actually getting to eat the food. Here we have flash grilled scallops, lemon essence, and ginger asparagus and pita bread, but all gluten-free. Remember, gluten can be hiding in the sauce, too. Mmm, tastes good. Can't tell it's gluten-free at all. So here you have it from Metaphor, down here in Tribeca, where they have options for everyone. Vegetarians, meat eaters, and gluten-free. See you next time on The Skinny NYC. Mm-hmm.